Hey everyone, it's Pastor Ryan here for day 22 of our 21 day Easter reading challenge. If you've heard me teach it all the past several years, you know it's not at all surprising that I've gone one extra time than I had allotted. But I wanted to focus on John 21 today. And just a word, I'm going to be preaching on John 21 this upcoming Sunday. And so I'd love to invite you and your family to join us. Um, we worship at 1050 here in the sanctuary at 1586 McGavick Pike. We take COVID precautions here. We, uh, we've got some extra distance between our pews to have safe seating. You can also join us on Facebook at 1050 a.m. I'm going to be preaching on the second half of John 21, but I want to focus on the first half today in this devotion. It's a scene that after the resurrection of Jesus, the disciples are not with Jesus at the present time, and so they go out fishing. I think, like any person, they've got to get their breakfast, and they're fishermen by trade. So they're out on the Sea of Galilee uh, fishing, and uh, when they're out there, they're not having a really good catch, and this man shows up across the way, he's on the shore, and he yells at them, do you have any fish? And he calls them, it's interesting, he calls them children, which is not a normal phrase you'd use to talk to other adults. And they say no, and he says, why don't you toss your net on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. Well, the, uh, it says, when they cast it, they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, it is the Lord. And Simon, of course, uh, strips off his robe, dives in the pool, dives into the sea and swims to Jesus. That's how desperate he is to get there. But I think it's interesting. I don't think it's at all surprising that they don't recognize this man who's, let's say he's 50 yards or more uh, away from them. And they don't, they, don't under, they don't recognize who he is until he performs this miracle, which is very similar to a miracle that he performed earlier in their ministry. And I think that this is helpful for us uh, as we think about our own discipleship in Jesus, there's a moment for, if you're a Christian, there's a moment when you follow Jesus, right? And it's a, a powerful moment. You are convicted of your sin. You are aware of the gospel. You're aware of Christ's death on behalf of us. And you've decided to cast your lot in with him, to believe by faith. And so you, uh, you follow Jesus in obedience to baptism. And that's typically a very impactful moment for everyone. I mean, I'd be surprised if it wasn't an impactful moment. But as we go through our Christian life, there are days that are mundane, there are days that are hard, uh, and it might be harder to see Jesus on those days. Uh, maybe life's going so good that you don't even think about Jesus. But there are things that happen in our lives that remind us, right? We catch a glimpse of the way in which Jesus worked in our lives previously, right? Maybe that's someone else coming to faith or having a spiritual conversation with someone, and it reminds you of the grace that you experienced whenever you believed for the first time. Or, uh, you know, maybe it's just a, a, an experience in your life that reminds you of the vigor and the, the joy that you had at one earlier point in your life. And I think these moments are helpful to encourage us in our service and in our passion in following Jesus. Like Peter, who dives in the lake to swim out to Jesus, uh, nothing was going to stop him from getting there. These remind us of our call. Uh, they remind us that the Holy Spirit is inspiring us to can help us to keep walking. Uh, in our baptistry here at the church, right behind me, you can see we've got the dove here. And it's a reminder of the Holy Spirit who falls upon Jesus at his baptism. Uh, we are filled with the Spirit if, if we've trusted him by faith. And so as we think about our discipleship, you know, Easter was yesterday. And uh, Easter is a high point for us, but we have to go back into the normal doings of life. I mean, we do celebrate the resurrection every Sunday. We try to live out the resurrection every day, but some days are more exciting than others. Some days are less exciting, but nevertheless, we look for Jesus all the time. We're, we want to look for how he is continuing to work in the world through his spirit, uh, through his body, that is through the church, and so I pray that as we kind of come to a close uh, on our 21 days, I pray that this time has encouraged you. If you want to ever study through the Gospel of John again, you can feel free to go back and watch them. We'll uh, post uh, all the videos put together. Uh, but also, uh, yeah, just continue reading the, the Bible, right? If this is the end of the, our reading challenge, but if I would encourage you to continue to make a regular habit of Bible reading, uh, one chapter, if you're not used to reading, one chapter a day is a great way to start. Uh, maybe turn the next page over. Start reading from Acts chapter 1 and read through the book of Acts. See how Jesus continues to work through his disciples in the world. Uh, read through the letters of the New Testament to see how the church lives out the reality 
of Christ's resurrection amongst each other and in the world. Uh, if, these com if these videos have encouraged you in any way, I would really love it if you would send us a message on Facebook, leave a comment, send us an email even. Uh, send me an email, ryan at dalewoodchurchnashville.com. It just really would bless us to know if these have blessed you in any way. Uh, feel free to share these with your friends, and uh, we will be back soon uh, with, more, uh, uh, with more devotions. Again, we'd love for you to join us here on Sundays at 1050.